In this video, we're gonna talk about the AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate Exam Guide. Now let me just tell you this, one of my favorite AWS certifications of all time is the AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate. I would say if you were only to get one AWS certification and you were in a technical role, this is the one I would go for undoubtedly. This is a certification that's gonna allow you to have the majority of the conversations you need to have with your customers and clients at the level you need to have them at. It's going to allow you to be very competent in meetings and speak intelligently about AWS Cloud. And it's just going to help you to become a very good AWS Solution Architect. Uh, it's based very closely on the AWS Well Architected Framework in terms of best practices and principles for building an AWS. And I think you're going to like it. That's why I'm gonna go over the exam guide right now. So this is the AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate exam guide. I'm gonna to link to this PDF in the description down below, and I'm just gonna go over it here. So the AWS Solution Architect Associate, I'm gonna abbreviate it as SA Associate as we go on, is an exam intended for individuals who perform a solution architecture role. As you know, I'm a solution architect. Uh, AWS Solution Architect. This exam validates a candidate's ability to design secure and robust solutions using AWS technologies. Okay, let's take a look at these bullet points here. You need to be able to design solutions using appropriate AWS services and by following architectural principles based on requirements. And you need to be able to provide implementation guidance based on best practices to an organization throughout that workload lifecycle. Those two bullets basically just describe my whole job right there, but it's a lot more than that. So let's really dig into this. So you might be asking yourself, who is the target candidate for this? Now, one of the details it says here is you need at least one year of hands-on experience designing secure, high-performing, cost-effective, high, highly reliable, scalable systems. Those are all synonyms that come out of the well-architected framework. If you don't have one year of hands-on experience, don't worry, it's still possible to clear the Solution Architect Associate. Would having one year of hands-on cloud experience with AWS help you? Of course it would, but don't let this stop you from pursuing this certification because you're gonna be able to pass it if you put in the work. So yeah, hands-on experience in compute, networking, storage management, and databases. If you don't have the hands-on experience, just a preparation in the exam and you opening up an AWS free tier account is going to help you huge. The ability to identify and define technical requirements for the solution that involves the AWS technology. The ability to identify which AWS services meet a given technical requirement. An understanding of the best practices for building the well architected solutions on AWS understanding of the AWS global infrastructure. That's another one that's very common with the AWS cloud practitioner. If you're watching this video right now and you don't even have the AWS cloud practitioner cert, at the end of this video, I'm gonna link to that AWS cloud practitioner video where I go over that exam guide. So definitely check that out. And you need an understanding of AWS security services and features in relation to traditional services. All right, now let's look at what's outside the scope of this exam. This is, this is not going to be tested on the exam. That's just as, as important to know as what is going to be tested. So you're not going to be expected to design complex hybrid network architectures. You don't need to design identity federation across multiple accounts. You don't need to design architectures that meet compliance requirements. Thank goodness. You need to do that in real life, but for this exam, you don't have to worry about it. You don't need to incorporate specialized services in a design. You don't need to develop deployment strategies and you don't need to create sh migration strategies for complex multi-tier applications. Again, these are all on the job, real world things. Some of these things that they say you don't have to do, these are some things you could be expected to find in the AWS SA Pro exam. All right, so this is very, consistent across the AWS certification exams. In case you don't know, there's a couple of different response types. There are multiple choice and multiple response. 
Uh, multiple choice is basically there's three inconsistent distractors, which are wrong, and there's one answer choice. And then multiple response has two or more correct responses out of five or more responses for the multi-choice. There are also 15 unscored questions that don't affect the score that's up here. Uh, who knows what they are, but uh, you have 15 unscored questions, which you, it, you, if you go in there and, and blow those, you'll still be uh, okay. But again, do your best on all of them. Uh, the exam score for this ranges between a 100 and a 1,000. Passing score is 720. So you don't need, I mean, this is doable, very doable. Let's go ahead and go into the content outline and break down the domains of this. So domain one is design resilient architectures. This is 30% of the exam. Domain two is design high performing architectures. That's 28%, almost a third. Domain three is design secure applications and architectures. That's 24% of this exam. And then domain four is design cost optimized architectures. So most of the, the first three are around, around, let's see, two, the first two are around a third. Then the third one is around a quarter of a percentage. And then domain four is around one fifth of the exam. So domain one, let's dig into this a little bit more, designing those resilient architectures. Bullet 1.1 is design a multi-tier architecture solution. So you need to determine a solution design based on access patterns. Determine the scaling strategy for the components used in the design and be able to select appropriate database requirements based on the requirements. Select appropriate compute and storage services based on the requirements. Bullet 1.2, design highly available and or fault tolerant architectures. So you need to be able to determine the amount of resources needed to provide fault tolerant architectures across availability zones and then select highly available configurations to mitigate single points of failure. Be able to apply AWS services to improve the reliability of legacy applications when application changes are not possible. So how can you mod uh, optimize an application that you can't re-architect? Select an appropriate disaster recovery strategy to meet business requirements and identify key performance indicators to ensure the high availability of the solution. Bullet 1.3 is design decoupling mechanism using AWS services which includes determining which AWS services can be leveraged to achieve loose coupling of the components and determining when to leverage serverless technologies to enable decoupling. And then bullet 1.4 is choosing appropriate resilient storage. So defining the strategy in terms of the durability of the uh, requirements that you need. Identifying how to the data services consistency will affect the operation of the application select data services that will meet the access requirements of the application and identify storage services that can be used with hybrid and non-cloud native applications. A lot of great stuff there. Let's go ahead and move on to domain two, designing high performing architectures. So bullet point 2.1 is identify elastic and scalable compute solutions for a workload, select the appropriate instances based on the compute storage and network requirements, and choose the appropriate architectures and services that scale to meet the performance requirements. Notice that a lot of the bullet points say, do this, but in the context of meeting the requirements. And you'll notice within the SA associate exam, you're definitely gonna need to answer the questions and the questions that have the best answers are gonna map to the requirements that the exam is asking you to meet. Identify the metrics to monitor the performance of the solution, okay? Bullet point 2.2, select high performing and scalable storage solutions for a workload, select storage services and configurations that meets the performance of demands and determine storage services that can scale to accommodate the future needs. Bullet point 2.3, select high performing network solutions for a workload, that's selecting the appropriate AWS connectivity options to meet performance demands, selecting the appropriate features to optimize connectivity to AWS public services and determining edge caching strategy to provide performance benefits and selecting the appropriate data transfer service for migration and ingesting of data. Bullet point 2.4 is choosing high performing database solutions for a workload. 
meaning you need to select the appropriate database scaling strategy for the architecture, determine when database caching is required for more performance improvements, and then choose a suitable database service to meet the performance needs. Domain three, design secure applications and architectures. 3.1 says design secure access to AWS resources. So you need to be able to determine when to choose between users, groups, and roles, interpret the net effect of given access policy. So uh, a good tool to use for this would be IAM Access Analyzer. would help you do that. Select appropriate techniques to secure your root account. And I have a video on that, on how to add multi-factor authentication to your root account. Determine ways to secure credentials using the features of AWS IAM, that's Identity and Access Management. And determine the secure method for application access to the AWS APIs. And finally, for bullet point 3.1, select appropriate services to create traceability for access to AWS resources. Bullet point 3.2 is designing secure application tiers. So given traffic control requirements, determine when and how to use security groups and network access control lists. Determine a network segmentation strategy using a mix of public and private subnets. We used to do this in an on-premises uh, data centers and stuff. Now you have to do that in the cloud as well. Select the appropriate routing mechanism to securely access AWS service endpoints or internet-based resources from the Amazon VPC. So this would be things like VPC endpoints or interface gateway endpoints or internet gateway endpoints or NAT gateways and those types of things. And then select the appropriate AWS services to protect applications from external threats. Bullet point 3.3 is select appropriate data security options and determine the policies that need to be applied to objects based on access patterns. Select appropriate encryption options for data at rest and in transit for AWS services. And select appropriate key management options based on requirements. And now for the final domain for the SA associate certification, domain four. Design cost-optimized architectures. So in bullet point 4.1, identify cost-effective storage solutions. That's determining the most cost-effective data storage option based on the requirements. Apply automated processes to ensure that data over time is stored on storage tiers that minimize cost. Bullet point 4.2, identify cost-effective compute and database services. Determine the most cost-effective Amazon EC2 billing options for each aspect of the workload and determine the most cost-effective database options based on the requirements. Again, you see that common theme there based on the requirements. Select appropriate scaling strategies from a cost perspective. Select and size compute resources that are optimally suited for the workload. And then determine the options to minimize total cost of ownership through the managed services and serverless architectures. Bullet point 4.3 is design cost-optimized network architectures, which includes identifying when content delivery can be used to reduce AWS cost and determining strategies to reduce data transfer costs within AWS. Determine the most cost-effective connectivity options between AWS and on-premises environments. So that has a lot to do with hybrid networking and hybrid cloud solutions in AWS. And that's the end of all four domains for the AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate. Like I said earlier, I'm going to link this particular PDF document in the description below. This is the appendix of things that you can take a look at and be familiar with. This is kind of a summary of some of the topics that were covered in the bullet points. I'm not going to go over this line by line, but I would encourage you to take a look at it. Please let me know in the comments below any areas you'd like for me to focus on in future videos. And again, please subscribe to the channel. This channel is all about AWS and helping you on your journey and helping you learn AWS best practices. So definitely give me a subscription and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.